The history of Chinese AKs here in the U.S. begins with the rifle's development in Russia. Then in 1956, they introduced it to their communist friends in China. Here in the U.S. in 1968, the Gun Control Act ceased the import of any full-auto firearms. Thus, very few AKs were imported in full-auto to the U.S. In 1973, Norinco took over manufacture of the Chinese AKs. Then in 1984, Poly Polytechnologies was established as an exporter. In the mid-1980s, those Chinese semi-auto AKs were imported here to the U.S. In 1986, the Firearms Owners Protection Act stopped the domestic manufacture of any full-auto firearms, thus very few AKs were able to legally be converted to full-auto. In 1989, the semi-automatic rifle ban ceased the import of any assault-style rifles. Then, in 1994, the ban on munitions from China effectively stopped all AKs coming from China. Taking a look at a Chinese AK-47, this one is a Polytech model AKS-762. We'll take a close look at the rifle as well as how it relates to the world of AK collecting and in particular the Chinese imported AKs. So this one is a pretty cool model. It's uh, for all respects new in the box. It has its original box that it was imported with. This particular one was imported by Kengs out of Georgia. But there were quite a few importers of these. This model has the underfolding bayonet, so the bayonet slot in the box is empty. Otherwise, it's got most of its accessories, although it would have come with five of these magazines. They're marked with Polytech on the floor plate. They have the characteristic stainless steel follower and no rib, like most of the Chinese AKs. We can see that this one has some interesting markings. Uh, like most of the Polytechs, it's marked with its importer in front of the magazine well. This one is the model AKS-762, marked on the side there. It comes from the fo factory 416. It's the triangle factory mark there. This one is Polytech, so it says PW, and then 85, meaning it was made in 1985. So this one is mar also marked Polytech without their logo, like an early model with Beijing, China. It's got the solid... This is actually a darker color wood for some of the Chinese. It's got the smooth pistol grip, like to characterize it as an early one. And again, the underfolder spiked bayonet. This one's got its sling attached, otherwise it would be rolled up at the bottom right of the box there. This one is basically unfired. And once we open it up in a moment here, you'll see that most of the parts don't have any wear on them either. Uh, very high quality AKs, well made, using quality materials. You can see that it's marked in English. It was definitely made as a rifle to be imported to the U.S. This one's basically identical to the Norinco 56S. They came in a couple of different uh, styles from Norinco and Polytech. This model, uh, AKS from Polytech, could have come with uh, the side folding stock uh, or the underfolding stock. The bayonet is a spike bayonet that starts with a vertical uh, blade and then three grooves to give it sort of a triangle spike. It kind of hinges there behind the front sight post and locks to the front sight post and then locks itself back. There's a little channel in the lower handguard so that it can nest in there. It's very comfortable when it's folded. Again, you can see inside the chamber is chrome lined as well as the barrel. And this one's really never even had a round chambered. As we take a look at some of the internals, we can see that there's very little wear on the top of the hammer from the bolt carrier. And it's characteristic two-tone bolt carrier like most of the Chinese rifles. Uh, again, no wear marks at all. This is basically new in the box which is pretty rare. These were imported only up until 89, the 89 import ban with the bayonets and pistol grips and everything. And this is again marked 1985 so it's one of the earlier models of the AKS imported by Polytech. Before these were the Legend series imported by Polytech which were milled receivers. These though have very substantial receivers. We'll take a measurement there on the on this uh, Polytech and we see that it's at 0.9 and then as a comparison we'll take a 
uh, measurement off of a Wasser from Romania. And we can see that they come in at just over five. So the Chinese receiver is almost twice as thick as the European receivers. And you can see that from this angle when you look at the rail there. Now measure or compare that thickness to the thickness of the Chinese rail. And you can see that it's substantially thicker with the Chinese models. And this is throughout all of the Chinese AKs. Because of that, their receivers are more rigid, less, uh, more resilient to dents and uh, having the pins drift. Because of this, the uh, inside dimensions are a little thinner, and you might have trouble with your stocks or your hand guards trying to attach a set of European uh, accessories to the Chinese AKs. To wrap up the video, because this is an original, we're just going to take a look at the manual. A lot of people can just turn off the video at this point if they're not inter interested in it. Uh, but again, this is a, a neat experience to be able to see all of the original stuff. These were imported by more than one company. These happen to be imported by Kangs, and they did a pretty decent manual. Once they get into the Mac 90s and some of the po uh, post-ban AKs, the manuals got pretty, pretty cheap and much more crude. We've got lots more information on Chinese AKs over on our website, so if this sparked any interest as a collector or someone who's interested in the history of AKs, uh, there's lots more information out there for you. Again, this is a quick look at a very interesting, uh, early imported, well-made Chinese AK, the Polytech AKS-762. As always, thanks for watching. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.